check this out. The new GitHub MCP server controls my GitHub repositories. Now, I will explain how I set this thing up, but this is so amazing, I want you to see it first. So I'm using now the VS code uh, insiders version. As you can see, I'm in the GitHub Copilot chat window in agent mode. I'm using agent and Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and I have tools for MCP that I actually can use uh, with different, different tools on GitHub. So how this thing actually works, check this out. I'm, I can just say, please create a new repo called bad jokes and generate in it code that will be a web app that tells funny dead jokes using some free dead jokes api and and add a title saying github is awesome all right, so I just pasted in the prompt I created, I wrote, and as you can see, the GitHub Copilot actually tries to run a command called create repository. Now, if I click on it, you can see that we have the name dead jokes. It understood my request. It says it will be a, a public repo because private equals false. And we have the login. My user in GitHub is actually Houdini. This is correct. And it actually used MCP server. And as you can see, I will now create the simple web app that fetches dead jokes from the I can has that joke API. So I'm going to click on run, uh, run push file. And we can see that uh, push multiple files to GitHub repository in a single commit. This tool is from GitHub MCP server. This is MCP server. Now check this out. I will click on the yellow error arrow and click on always allow. I'm gonna zoom out just for a second so you can see this is a simple conversation. I just pasted in my prompt and the MCP server actually manages everything for me. And now check this out. It says I've created the new repo called Dead Jokes and added a simple modern web application. So we have the link under my profile and I have the page already opened in here. So I'm going to refresh. Boom, we have the Dead Jokes web app. Now, if I'm if I'll click on it, then you can see we have a simple readme file. We have a simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript web application. And we have some basic UI. And now I can keep going and I can say, add a detailed readme file to the repo with instructions on how to use it add examples and conduct a security assessment to find vulnerabilities. All right, so now I said, add a more detailed readme file to GitHub repository, which is actually how we work in real life. Then I can also say, please fetch uh, pull the uh, the code from my GitHub repo so I can learn it locally. Now, in the meanwhile, while this thing actually works, what I want you to see is the GitHub new uh, new repository for MCP server. Now you can see that it has the code. And the interesting thing is about MCP is how it works because actually what happens. Uh, under the hood is that we can, we speak to an LLM, to the AI, if you wish. And the AI understands it needs to invoke some tool in order to accomplish our task. And the thing about MCP is that it actually can set up a local server on our machine and the AI, the VS Code in our example or the Cloud Desktop app, if we like, can speak to that local MCP server running on our machine. And this proxy, this MCP server will communicate to the service we want to communicate with, which in our case is the official GitHub uh, website. Now, the way it works is that we need to generate the access token with the relevant permissions. And by doing so, 
we can actually give permissions to the MCP server to connect to GitHub on our behalf. So this is really important to keep in mind that by setting MCP server, we can expose ourselves to some serious, serious security issues. So we do need to keep in mind, we need to keep our access tokens secured. All right. So anyway, this is the overview. And if you go to the GitHub repository of GitHub MCP server, then you can see it's so easy because all you need to do is to install Docker, which I have installed on my computer. Then you need to generate your own access token with the relevant permissions. And then you can just click to install the server on VS Code or uh, uh, VS Code Insiders, which is what I'm using. So if I'm click, if I'll click on it, you can see that it will automatically open the option to install the server. As you can see in here, install server. I already have it installed. So you can click on show configurations and you can see that we have the access tokens and all uh, everything set up automatically. Now I will do want you to see another thing that down here below, you can just uh, set up everything manually or you can use uh, in VS Code, or you can use the Cloud Desktop app. Now, what's important to keep in mind is the way this thing actually works. Because again, it doesn't matter if you use VS Code or you use a uh, Cloud Desktop app. The thing to keep in mind is that GitHub actually wrapped the MCP server in a containerized environment via Docker. This means that when the AI, in our case is the GitHub Copilot, understands it needs to uh, communicate with the MCP server by GitHub, uh, then it knows that it needs to invoke a tool. And the way to do it is to see the documentation, the settings in our app, and in our cases to run a Docker command, as you can see with these arguments. So this means that our AI, our LLM actually invoke tools uh, for us to accomplish the tasks. And we do need to keep in mind that it actually runs a system command on our local machine, which is Docker with these arguments calling the GitHub server with all the configurations and the GitHub personal access token. Now, GitHub does as this, these, this feature of hiding masking the content of the token, so it will be kept secure. So anyway, these are the settings of using the GitHub MCP server. You have the blog published on April 4th, which is two days ago. And this is really exciting and amazing. And I'm going to go back into the repo and I'm going to prove the uh, create or update file. We can see that not only the GitHub Copilot creates the code and writes the code on our behalf, it even executes everything and pushes the code to GitHub. We no longer need to create on version control or source control and in doing the commits, we can control it using the chat itself. So again, we can see that I will help you to create a detailed readme file for the dead jokes repository. I'll include the instructions, the installation instructions, usage examples, uh, blah, 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 blah. I notice I need to get the existing readme MD file, SHA first, if it exists before updating it, you can see that it tries to uh, conduct some security measures. And if you click on run, you can see what's going on behind the scenes. And there you go, I've created a comprehensive readme file. So if you want to see it, all we need to do is of course, to refresh the page. And there it goes. We have all the detailed information. This is amazing, right? A simple modern web application that display random dead jokes patches from blah, 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 our features with emojis. How amazing this is. And now we can even say, please pull the repo and run it so I can see the web app you created. And now I can just slide back and see Copilot works in real time time and what i expect it to do look running the command understanding it needs to clone the repo and cd into it enter into the repo and there you go it tries to run the commands and the token ampersand ampersand is not available in separator because i'm on windows and this is a linux command and it knows it there's an issue with the command Syntax on Windows. Now, th this shows you how amazing the agent by GitHub is. So it fixed the issue. It cloned the repo. If I'll zoom out, I've cloned the repo. 
And now it's, it tries to start the application. So let's see again, again, it had the same error. Now this is the part where I would expect the agent to understand that if it failed once with ampersand, it won't return on the same mistake, but it did. So let's just click on CD dead jokes once again. Let's see it fetched the files. Yeah, it did continue to iterate. Yes, start index and it started index, but it tries. What did it just do? It started the app. Oh, all right. Okay. There it goes. Let's click on the Chrome. All right. GitHub is awesome and generate another. And it uses the API. This is so cool. The MCP server by GitHub actually created the code, generated the code, created the repo on GitHub, published it, updated it, fetched the data, and this uh, this all has been accomplished only by MCP. Now, the last thing we can do is to choose some random repo, all right? I have this WhatsApp chat GPT bot I created, this repo uh, AI bot, which as you can see, it's just a simple script. So I can say something like, uh, please connect. Let's do it, all right? Let's do it. And let's say, please, uh, please connect to this repo and write a security assessment report, check if there are any issues, vulnerabilities, and if so, sum it in a table with the following, following header columns, finding, explanation all right and now this is a test if the agent can actually connect to an existing repo so as you can see it tries to invoke a command of search repositories it says that this is a mcp server command and it took the name by itself i click continue and we see it's working and this is a way of understanding the context of our code base. Now, this is rather small file, but I do have projects which mu with much larger uh, uh, code base and I can connect to it as well. And as you can see, the GitHub Copilot agent actually ran several commands. Um, let's see, as you can see, it tries to analyze, get access to the content. This is cool. Then get file content. It searched the repositories. Then it got the content of the file. And now it got, it looks at the content. Look, look at this, look at this. This is amazing. From analyzing the repository. All right, from analyzing the repository and its package, .json file it provide a comprehensive security assessment of WhatsApp GPT bot. Look at this, exposed API key, dependencies, vulnerabilities, versions, Axios, WhatsApp credentials, network security, HTTP, uh, uses ng-rock tunneling, nice. Node.js version, access control, no building user authentication or authorization system. Do you see how powerful this thing is? So thank you, GitHub, for an amazing tool. The MCP server is definitely something I'm going to work with. It's going to make my life much easier. So thank you, GitHub, and I hope you like this video. If so, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do whatever you can to show some love. Thank you, and see you next time.